Hello, hello. Can everybody hear me? Awesome. We will start here in just a minute or two. Um, might give just a few more people time to to roll in. I still see a few people trickling in. Guys, I'm excited for this one. Um, I think you will be too. Some really fun things to share with you all. Um, I'll go ahead and start um, prompting everyone to uh, check out check out Crowdcast. If you haven't been here before, if you're new to this, look at the bottom. You see, uh, should be something that says "Ask a Question." That is where I would like everyone to filter in their questions. We're going to hopefully address as much as we can, if not everything, at the end of the open huddle. Um, so if you want to just chat um, and say, oh, wow, that's awesome, <laughs> or whatever, you can in this chat over to your right. But if you have a specific question about anything we're going over, or um, please go ahead and pop that into the Ask a Question tab there at the bottom. So I, I guess I will go ahead um, and get going with this. Um, it says, I feel like there's there's always something that I forget at the beginning of these. Um, okay, they're recording. Madison, am I good? Is there anything else that I'm supposed to? I don't think so. You've let us into it. Okay. Um, so I am joined today by Madison, who is a product lead here at Springboard VR. She's really the one responsible for coordinating everything between all the departments as we release these features from marketing to legal to development, uh, design, et cetera. Um, so she's really the glue to making all of this work. And then also our CTO, Matt Hall, is with us as well. Um, going to help us out specifically with any FAQs that might be a little bit over my head on the technical side. Uh, so he's here to provide clarity when needed there. So I will go ahead and, and just jump straight into this. Um, and like I said, if you do have a question, please pop those into the ask a question tab there at the bottom. Um, so today, we're going to be showing you what we're calling Operator CDS 1.0, which is um, Content Distribution System is what we're calling it. Um, so there's going to be a number of releases of, of Operator CDS over the next few weeks. This is the fundamental foundation of, of, of our CDS. Um, and in a nutshell, it's, it's allowing you to download content from Springboard, as opposed to Steam. So there's there's obviously a lot there and we'll try to break down as much as we can in this webcast. Uh, but yeah, the, the quick topics and agenda, are just we're gonna walk you through what that 1.0 looks like, what changes uh, to expect. There, a lot of stuff will be kind of the same, but maybe formatted or designed a little bit differently. We just wanna make sure that you feel fully comfortable with the new release. Um, yeah, because things might change a little bit here and there. So, uh, yeah, so things like notification and marketplace, the the new library page, kind of the new marketplace content page, uh, EULA. So because content now is going to come from Springboard, that means we have to handle the, the end user license agreements with the content creators. Um, and so you'll be able to accept those from Springboard. Thankfully, we're going to do it much better than Steam in uh <laughs> that your customer's playtime will never be interrupted uh, because of a new EULA. We'll get into that a little bit later and, and, and we'll have FAQs um, and Q&A at the end as well. Uh, so it, it breaking it down a, a little bit more, this operator CDS, the big things are EULAs through Springboard, um, no more Steam keys, um, <laughs> so no more going to each individual station, copy pasting that Steam key, downloading it. It's going to be one click download content to all stations or all locations or all experiences or individual stations, however you want to do it. Um, and then this, this release is also going to include some nice 
educational content, which we'll get into that uh, later on as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Madison. And she's going to kind of give you a walkthrough of kind of what's changing, what's new, but maybe designed a little bit differently. So Madison, go ahead and, and take it away. Thanks, Jordan. As, as Jordan said, is, can you hear an echoing, Jordan? Okay, oh, the echo's um, done. Sorry. Okay. So as Jordan said, mentioned, there's not going to be a ton of changes right now, but I'm just, uh, there's going to be a lot of familiar things, but I'm just going to highlight on the few things and we want to kind of show you what we're starting with. And then at the end of this, we're going to give you an idea of where this is going and what's coming in those future releases. So we'll start with the marketplace. You're going to start to receive notifications here where you can see things such as if prices are changing, such as increasing or decreasing, you will receive a minimum of two weeks notice on any game before the price changes. And as and you could receive up to a month of notice depending on when the developer decides to change that. Also, you will receive any pending notifications for pending EULA agreements, and it'll notify you here so you can know when you need to go in, update that, but you'll also be given plenty of time to do that, whereas Jordan stated you will not be, your, player, your clients will not be interrupted in the middle of the game during a business day. From here, we're going to go and look at the new content page. It's going to include a lot of the same things. We're going to have genres, the number of players. One thing differently you'll kind of see is that we will have a link that's going to link you from the piece of content to our Springboard community and discourse and where it can have anything from uh, different operators kind of giving their feedback to uh, the marketing assets that if we happen to have those. And if we go to the next page, it'll show you, you'll have what is already exists, but it has the description, the difficulty. But the one thing we have added is you'll see that the video trailer is now available for you to view in the marketplace, in addition to where it's always been available within the library. Further down on the content page, you'll be able to see that we've added a springboard review. Our teams worked really hard on curating a lot of content and spent a lot of time of putting together pros and cons for every single game of information that's gonna be valuable to you. In the future, we are working toward where we're gonna have more a better, uh, more like efficient review system, which will we plan to include operators within that, but that's still in the early planning stages. In the legal section, you can that's also been added. And as you can see, you can view the end user license agreement. So when you're in the marketplace and you go into a content page and you do decide you want to add it to your library at the bottom there, you first have to go to view the EULA. And from there, you're going to have to accept it. You go to the next slide. This is what the EULA will look like. You can scroll through. It's going to show you the late, like when this has been updated by the content creator. You do have to accept this EULA in order to be able to add it to your library. You can decline it, but if you decline it, you're not able to add it. But if you want to go through the user agreement and take a, like a few weeks to do that, you can just come back at any time to accept and then be able to add it to your library. And then once you do accept it, it's going to take you straight to the content page in the library where you can install all this onto all your stations. This is something we're really excited about, and I've received a lot of feedback from operators that I know it's going to make your lives a lot easier. From here, all you have to do is just enable it, click the switch, and you can do it based on location, experience type, or just individually is it per each station. At any time, it'll just show you which stations it's installed on. And then as well as if it's in the middle of install, it'll kind of give you just a percentage at where it's at in the install process. And from here, you'll be able to then see our new library page. This is something we are working on and we have a lot of exciting things in the future. 
but we did make some minor updates in our CDS, in our content distribution first release, where you can reorder all your games easily from your library. You can also see all those updates, as well as if a content creator decides to update their current EULA, from here you can see the notification and go in and accept it. We will give you plenty of notice. We'll send you emails. We'll give you all these notifications within the dashboard and you'll have several weeks to be able to accept it before. And, and you will have a deadline though. If you don't accept by that deadline, you the game will stop. You will like, uh, will stop until you go and ex do decide to accept that EULA. But like we said, we're not gonna interrupt and just give you no notice. Also from the library page, you'll now be able to see a high level of how many stations each of those games is on, as well as how much you're paying for that current month on licensing in those games, uh, as well as the uh, pricing for that game. And then here's just gonna show you the pricing summary. Uh, you'll be able to, as we add more pricing options, this will be the place where you'll be able to go and edit and change your different licensing options. So in addition to where you can see a high level at all times, what is your current monthly licensing fees total for the month? Now you can go into each piece of content and see what's your total licensing fee for that individual game. Uh, at that current phase in the month. And then from here, it, here we haven't really changed anything. The next three slides are pr pretty much the same. We've just formatted things a little differently. You'll have the ability to go in and edit uh, the game description. We do have a preset for the difficulty that's set by the content creator, and that's what we recommend, but you do have the option to go in and change it, as well as here you can edit the different tags that you have affiliated with the game. Launch setting is also available here from within the content page, and that's still the same. And then if you go, and then you can also view from here the and edit the controller instructions. Now we're gonna go into, Jordan's been working a lot on education the last year in our initiatives, and he's gonna go walk you through some of our upcoming uh, educational content that we're gonna have available to you. Thanks, Madison. Yeah, so so these categories that we have here, they're really actually meant for, you know, we're starting to serve universities, public libraries, um, and grade schools with VR. And so this was just more for them to help them understand what VR is and what the different things you can do with it. And so this is, so we've obviously also been establishing relationships with educational content creators and getting their content on board and being available through Springboard. Um, but we've been talking to them as well about, okay, what if we took some of this educational content into the arcades? And of course, like, yeah, sure. But what is that going to look like? And, you know, our answer is, well, we don't really know, but we think there's a place for it. And um, so even as, as you all now have the opportunity to offer, or you will here very soon have the opportunity to offer a number of different educational contents, you can even use these categories if you want to, as you're talking to the principal of your local high school or, you know, of your local university, if you're trying to bring in different school groups for field trips or, or this or that, um, it just helps them understand how to even think about VR. And I'm just going to just do, I think, three quick um, examples of the types of content that we have. Um, and the last thing I'll say too about this is we want to get a little bit more involved in helping you all adopt this content at the arcade. So whether that be us providing plans or ideas for how to bring in school groups or whatever that may be, or summer school, this or that. Uh, we want to get more involved in uh, with you guys specifically in helping figure that out uh, because we definitely think there's a good place for this. And, and we think schools and, and stuff like that would, would love to experience VR and what better place to do it than in the middle of the day when generally that's not your busy time, right? 
Um, so I think it'd be an awesome opportunity to, to start doing stuff like that. So we're excited to work with you all to help figure this, this piece out. But let me give you uh, three quick examples of the type of content that's going to be available. So first is this uh, frog dissection content. Um, so, I mean, what an awesome opportunity to, I mean, it's a full experience. The, the content creator is Victory VR. Uh, they have like this holographic teacher that walks you through step by step everything. They have all the tools on your left. Okay, you know, pick up this, now do this. And then at the end, I think there might even be a quiz. But it's 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 fantastic experience that, you know, hey, instead of buying all these materials school or you know, underfunded schools, like, hey, why don't we come do the frog dissection lab at my arcade? Bring in 10 students or whatever it might be. So there's a lot of fun stuff we could do there. Um, second, here's this one called physiology of the eye. And this one is awesome. It, um, it's really the, the whole anatomy, but they started with the eye. And as you hover over different things, there's a, um, a narrator kind of telling you what the different, um, pieces are and, and what they do and how they interact with the rest of the body. And, um, anyway, like I said, they're starting to expand to become more than just the eye and different parts of the body and muscles and ligaments and bones and all that stuff. And it's just a really cool interactive content that helps students obviously visualize the human body and those sorts of things. Um, then the last one that I want to show is this content called IDR. And it, it basically teaches, helps kids learn how to program in VR and they can do this together. So this is a collaborative one. You can get multiple students in the same VR environment, uh, collaborating together on building different objects uh, with, via programming in VR. It's actually really cool. Um, you know, we've seen students go from zero programming experience to in 30 minutes, they've sort of created their first very basic programming app. So lots of fun stuff that we're really excited to introduce to you. Those are just three very quick examples, but um, we'll, of course, be showing more once, once we release this stuff. Okay. Um, I will prompt everyone again to, if you have questions, go ahead and, and pop them over in the ask a question little tab over there. Here's, here's you know, as we've been talking to some different operators, here's the, the four most common questions that, that we've seen. And so there's kind of a lot to unpack in some of these. Um, so, so tune in and, and focus here if you can. And I'll do my best to, to explain this as easily as possible. Um, okay, the obvious question, not a lot to unpack here. But when can I expect this release? April 2nd is our target release date of this today, unless Matt or somebody wants to um, stop me from, from communicating. Likely to be, likely to be a week. April 9th. Oh, the next week. April 9th. Okay, so April 2nd, April 9th yeah. is uh, the target for, for this release. Um, okay, so there is so there's quite a bit to, to unpack here on the second question. Do I have to switch um, or can I continue to side low content from Steam? Um, and the answer is yes, you do, but you will have plenty of time to do it. Um, so this is not going to be, we release it April 2nd or April 9th, and now Steam no longer works. It's it's going to be a process. Um, but, you know, so to unpack that a little bit further, we've devs have already been begun requesting that we no longer allow their content to be loaded if it was downloaded from Steam. Um, and, and like I said, we'll definitely have a grace period. Um, and, and fortunately, the process is extremely easy, which I'll get to that here on question four. And you kind of saw what Madison presented. You just click a button and it downloads to all the stations. Um, and, uh, you know, on top of this, which I will get into this year, and I think in the next slide is our Springboard SDK. And we're building some really cool uh, features in our Springboard SDK, kind of the the one that I'll talk about right now is our multiplayer SDK. At a high level, what we're trying to do is universalize multiplayer. So um, as you know, getting into a multiplayer game with your arcade and your customers is extremely difficult and it's different for every single piece of content. Uh, we're trying to universalize that and make it so that if your customers have either joined or hosted one 
game, uh, they can do it for literally any any of the other ones in in Springboard's library. So uh, that type of functionality won't be available if you get the content from Steam. Um, and so there's going to be a lot more involved and a lot more features in our Springboard VR SDK. Uh, but that's that's obviously a big one. Um, okay, do I need Steam at all anymore? Technically, yes. Uh, you will still need to get Steam VR from Steam. Um, however, we're trying to work with Valve to find a solution so that we don't have to get Steam at all anymore. Uh, because we technically can do this ourselves and basically package Steam, Steam VR into Springboard when you download it, but it does violate their terms of service. And you know, we as a company, we just do everything above board. We don't want to get into that. So we're working with Val. We're having conversations. We're we're optimistic, but um, at this point, you still do have to get Steam VR, and that's it, though. So, um, and then four. How do I switch over my current title? So it's very simple. Uh, Madison showed the page where you, it's in your library. You just you know want it to all of your stations. You just literally click that one button, toggle it on, and it's going to begin downloading to all of your stations at all of your locations. Um, and, um, you know, you can keep the steam version on your PC still. So let's say you had Arizona sunshine from steam. Now you want to get it from springboard. Uh, you downloaded it from springboard. Uh, again, you can keep the steam version there if you want to, but you know, our system will auto detect the springboard version and launch it. And so there won't be two tiles of Arizona sunshine in your launcher. It'll just be one and it'll be the springboard version. Um, so you don't have to worry about any of that. You know, where we do recommend uninstalling the steam version is if you're just running out of disk space. So if you don't, if your hard drive's not big enough, that's, that's where maybe you can run into issues, but otherwise it's super simple. You just click the button, download it. We're going to auto detect everything. Um, we won't load the steam piece anymore. Um, so yeah. Um, that's that. Okay, and so here's the exciting stuff. So like like I mentioned at the beginning, this is really the foundation of our CDS, um, our content distribution system. There was an insane amount of work to, to get us to where we are, to have the ability to host content, to do the EULAs, to download the content um, and all this stuff. But it obviously opens up the, the opportunity for us to do a lot of fun stuff, including the SDK. But what we'll be releasing, uh, you know, two or three weeks after this initial launch is a bunch of pricing options. So monthly, annual, regional, and floating. Um, and they might be staggered in the releases, but they're coming very soon after this initial release. And the floating piece is, is what we're really excited about. And I want to make sure everyone understands what it is. Floating licenses. What that means is... If a content creator has opted in to offer their content on a flat monthly price and you have 10 stations and let's, I'm just going to use Arizona sunshine as an example. Let's say you buy five licenses of Arizona sunshine on a flat monthly basis. If in the case you have six or more stations running Arizona sunshine at the exact same time, the sixth station and above will start being billed on a per minute rate. Okay. So you can say, all right, I want five. Cause I think about five is, is the most I generally have playing this content. And then that way it keeps you from, it, it reduces your cost in a sense that you don't have to buy 10 flat monthly licensing license prices of Arizona sunshine. It'll just, it will still be available. It'll just start that sixth station will just start being billed on the per minute rate. So should save you guys um, a ton of money, hopefully. Um, if that didn't make sense, if you want a further explanation of that, feel free to go into to ask a question. Um, so Marketplace 2.0, as you guys know, it's a very basic page right now where it just kind of shows you all the content available. We're going to do some fun stuff with discoverability, sorting and filtering um here over the, the the next few weeks as well to make to make it just much more easy and better experience to find content relevant to you and content that you want at your arcade 
Uh, so a revamped analytics page. This is like the oldest page on our entire product. And we're doing a massive revamp of it where you'll get features where we'll go, we'll want you to input your hours of operation so that we can start tracking utilization rates, um, you know, peak hours, off peak hours. Uh, we're going to do even stuff like uh, bounce rates for content, just give you a ton more information to help you manage your business, run your business and help you make decisions based off, um, you know, the data that, that we're collecting for you. Um, okay. The check front integration. Um, as you guys know, this has been a conversation that we've been having for quite some time. When is Springboard going to build these necessary booking features so that I can do, so I can operate the way I want to operate with my business model? Uh, we've been looking in the check front. We've been having conversation, multiple, we've spent hundreds of hours uh, trying to really figure this out. I will be very honest with you guys. Like it is, this is one of the biggest challenges of, of our company right now is truly figuring out the perfect and best solution for you guys. What we don't want to do, if I'm being very honest with you guys, is be a booking company. <laughs> when we first built the booking system, it was for about 50 arcades. Okay, when you have that, when you have 50, at the time it felt like a ton, but we had a robust enough feature set that it worked for most people. Okay, now we're at 500. And you can imagine all of the unique business models and use cases that you guys might have to make the booking system work. So is, is developing Springboard's booking system off the table? No, it's not. But the process in figuring out what decision do we need to make is ongoing. And like I said, we're, we're, we're working with Checkfront. We have, I don't know, 10 or so arcades currently using them. And we're getting feedback, what's there, what's not. Having a lot of positive feedback. A lot of folks saying, well, it's almost there, but not quite. Or the UI is a little bit tricky, this or that. So we're just working through these different types of issues. And I assure you, this is so important. I know how important the booking system is for you guys. And, and we want to come to a solution that works for everyone as soon as possible. We're seeing if Checkfront can do some custom uh, features for us to, to fit the arcade business model. And like I said, we're, we're also exploring the possibility of expanding on our own, but it's just a rabbit hole that we're just not so sure we want to get down because like I said, we don't want to be a booking company. We want to be you know, an arcade management content distribution platform. And if there is someone, if there is a company out there that their sole purpose is, I want to be the best, most robust booking system in the world, that's that's a partner that we're looking for and saying, okay, you do that. You build all of the thousands and thousands of features necessary to, to fit all of the unique business models. We'll partner with you. We'll do a full integration. So anyway, that's a lot there. If you have more questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to talk more about that. Um, okay. Advertising, as you guys know, maybe a month or so ago, we turned on this little um, toggle for you all. Hey, I want to opt into this advertising beta thing give you a little bit of information. Some of you ask more specific questions. Uh, basically what we're trying to do, and we're still working through a number of challenges, it's more on the business side than it is on the technical side of, our, of the partner that we're working with. We are doing our best to reduce or totally eliminate your Springboard VR management fees um, based on this ad partner. And we believe, we feel optimistic that we can do that um, to reduce those fees, if, if not even totally make them free. There's a lot that's going on there. Um, different, different partners that we're working with to buy the ads and those sorts of things. Um, we're trying to work with the partner to sell on the idea that ads in VR are, are more powerful than just like a normal billboard ad. If you don't know much about this, they're just very non-intrusive billboard ads in the launcher environment. And if a customer happens to glance at it, go in their field of view, it counts as an impression. And that something like that would reduce the fees of Springboard that you have on a month to month basis. So anyway, there's still a lot that we're working on there. We feel optimistic. Um, but at this time, there's no real update. You know, we've had good progress and there's a major 
multi-billion dollar company that's starting to to spend money on ad space for VR that we're working with to, to hopefully make this a reality for you all, because we would love for Springboard to be majorly reduced, if not totally free for you guys. Um, and so that's that's what we're doing. So again, the more people that opts into this beta, still the better. At this point, there's really not any ads at all showing up. Um, but the more folks we have in the beta, I think that will get us to the point of knowing for sure, okay, can we do this or not? Um, so I do I, I do want to encourage you guys to, to go ahead and opt into that if you haven't already. Okay, and lastly is the Springboard SDK. Um, I kind of uh, mentioned it. There's going to be a lot there. Uh, the, the big one is the multiplayer. A lot of social elements, a lot of, you know, leaderboard type of stuff. Um, but we're working with content creators to, to use this and make the content uh, much more powerful, robust, and relevant for the VR arcades. Um, so a lot of really exciting things that we're going to begin working on. That sub guys are going to begin working on right after this this rollout of CDS. So, okay, that was a lot of information, and we are now ready to take your questions. I will facilitate the question asking and. Um, I will pass it off to, to Matt or whoever is relevant to, to answer the question. Um, so the first question is from Gail. If we don't have Steam Keys accounts, is there a way for employees to practice slash learn new games through Springboard? Um, <laughs> the answer is, I guess what you're trying to ask is, can I do that for free? Uh, the answer is no. Um, what what you could do is you could buy a license on a flat monthly rate, and there obviously then then that license you could play that literally as long as you want, uh, without you know you know for sure okay this is only going to be twenty bucks, and you can also offer that to your your customers as well. Um, we, we we did talk about in the future, do we want to have like a 30 minute learn this content type of window? Um, it, it's definitely something I think we will do, but it won't be included in this initial release. Um, let me know, Gail, if that answers your question or not. Um, okay. Uh, I see Oculus logos, but to be clear, there's still no official support for Oculus hardware, correct? Um, there shouldn't be Oculus logos. And if there is, I apologize. That's misleading. You're right. There is no, um, support for Oculus. We've been in contact with Oculus for over a year. Um, they've, they've given us reason to be optimistic at certain points. And then they've gone radio silent for months at a time also. So we just don't know the answer to the Oculus. We would love it, especially with this, Rift S that was just released today. We would love Oculus support. Again, they've they've given us reason to be optimistic, um, but we just don't know at this time. Um, so, does anyone have suggestions for large room scale experiences? Um, so, Siggy, Siggy, uh, this is not really a question that I think Springboard is suitable suited to answer. Um, if you are a Springboard customer, we have a discourse page. This would be a great to post in our discourse page. Um, we currently do not support free roam room, uh, content, but we are looking to do that soon. And, and this content distribution system is going to allow us to start doing stuff like that. So we actually, we will actually have some small ish. I mean, it's kind of a big announcement of a, a, a type of content that's going to come out for you all once we have the annual pricing option. But um, the there's lots of issues in supporting free roam content. I don't want to get into all of those right now, but um, some of that content will start to become available through Springboard, but we won't necessarily have a ton of amazing tools to support it at location. It's kind of a vague answer, but <laughs> uh, okay. Will we see the pricing model before things go live in April? The pricing model. Uh, if if you're talking about the flat monthly, yearly, annual, floating, um, no, 
you will not. So we're thinking probably, I don't know, three weeks after the release of this initial operator CDS, you'll then see the different pricing options, so regional, monthly, floating, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of the timeline on that. What happens when you have a contract with a developer for use of their game? Uh, it's a great question. And let's see, how do I answer this? So there will probably be a mechanism for content creators to verify, yes, you have a direct license with this piece of content. Um, you know, with that said, most content creators are probably going to encourage you all to move to Springboard. But yes, that option will still be there. And like I said, there will still be plenty of time to um, make this transition. It's not going to happen overnight. But yeah, we'll we'll give, I think we'll have some functionality there uh, that you can still do stuff like this. So. Is their education content more US centric? Uh, it should all be US centric. So I don't, I don't know what you're asking here. Um, all the educational content that we're working with, it's localized in English. If so, that may be, I don't know. Uh, Lee, if, if you have, if you can be more specific on that one, I'd love to answer you. I'm just not exactly sure what you're getting at there. Uh, okay, here's actually a fun question, and I'll, I'm going to let Matt answer this one. Is, is anyone working on an open source substitute for Steam VR? Uh, Solomon kind of answered there, but Matt, we, Matt, you want to take that one? Sure. Sure. So, oh, Jordan, can you mute yourself? Project called OpenXR, which just like ratified their first version this week. It is like an open standard for VR hardware and how it communicates. We are still waiting to see on how different hardware manufacturers actually implement it. So hopefully there will be an open source substitute for SteamVR one day. We just don't know when that's going to be. Uh, we'll possible to work with local partners to advert space. So Springboard has their own, we, we call them our announcement boards. They're, if you go into your operator panel, I believe in your edit experience type, you'll have the option to edit or customize your uh, announcement boards is what we call them, I think. And what they're meant for is like, hey, this Friday we're having a tournament or Thursdays is buy one, get one day just like little ads in the VR launcher to let your customers know of certain specials or promotions that you're having. You can work your own deal with your local partners uh, to, ha to, to buy that space if you want. Um, but the space that we're talking about, um, n n at, at least in this initial launch, no, there, there won't be any opportunity to kind of work with your local partners there for that. Will you guys make a tutorial video for newbies? Um, so not, not a video. We, we do want to release an in-launcher tutorial eventually. That kind of takes the user through the basic functionality of use, working with a Vive and whatnot. We don't have any ETA for that, though, at the moment. I don't think we'll be doing a video. I know other folks have, have done videos. Um, I think like James Pollock at... Arctic Sun has a pretty cool uh, intro video that he takes all of his customers through at the beginning. So you might get inspiration from him or other folks like Control V, have stuff like that. But hi, hi, Jason. Uh, I'm currently at work. This will be available for replay later. Later, yes. So John Luke already answered that. Um. In the revamped analytics, will we now be able to run game time by PC? To run game time by PC. Matt, can you? You're asking, Barry, if you want to post another one and clarify, that'd be great. Is there any upgrade? 
updates to see our current any upgrades to see our current booking so i believe you can export all of your bookings at any time i'll let uh, matt or uh, take this one to, to tell you how to do that I think you're maybe having some connectivity issues. Uh, Madison, do you know um, how to answer this question or, or how they can export their booking session? Um, not off the top of my head, but I can go ahead and send a follow up on that. Great, great. Um, so yeah, I know you can, and I'm going to bring in um, the voice of Springboard VR. Jamie Spittle to answer this question. Um, because I know he knows. Um, if he's anyway, we'll come back to this once Jamie gets in. We'll be sure to answer that question. But I know you can. I would Marie go ahead and Marie answered it for us. You go to admin locations, export reservation data. Okay. Currently, from what we have seen, Checkfront has been one-way booking, which has prevented us. Yes, yes, yes. Um, th these are, yes. Uh, Stephen, I, if, you are, if you aren't already talking to Madison, she's going through and talking with all the operators who are currently using the beta. These are definitely the issues that we're working through and trying to find proper solutions to it. So if you can, uh, if you're not already talking to her, it's, it's Madison at springboardvr.com. And she wants to fully understand all your pain points issues as we look to come to a solution. How do we opt into advertising? Marie, thanks so much again. Admin organization settings, beta access. Will, it, will there be special licensing for educational institutions? Special licensing, special. Well, special could mean a number of different things. Um, there, if you want to provide more clarity on that, Anthony, I'd be happy to answer your question. There will be, yeah, I, I guess it's just hard to answer that question um, without knowing what you mean by special. Uh, will the tags, genres, age ratings, and other settings that we have set for our games still be the same after CDS release? Um, I believe the answer to that question is yes. Um, if Madison, if you can confirm, or where is Jamie? I know he's got to be around. I invited him. Um, Marie, if you can give him a quick text or something, it'd be appreciated. Yeah. Yes, they will. Awesome. Okay. Uh, if we have purchased lifetime licenses through Steam, Jobs, and we'll still be. Yes, definitely. Uh, yes, James, for sure. And again, that'll be, we don't exactly know how that's going to work. Um, and the deadline, well, we won't get into the deadline, but there will be some mechanism for the content creator to say, yes, you have this, don't, you know, this guy has a license, no problem, something like that. Hey, Jamie. How's it going? Um, glad you could join us. Um, yep. if, if I'm opening my arcade soon, Will I have any trouble requesting Steam keys from the marketplace now? Uh, when will Steam keys be phased out? Will I have any? So no. So you, actually, Jamie, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, there's no timeline exactly for when we're going to be totally phasing out Steam keys. But as of right now, if you're opening now, you'll be able to use Steam keys for the foreseeable future. And and so what's going to happen, kind of the more specific process is if... Once we release April 9th or April 2nd, whatever it is, let's say Arizona Sunshine, they've already uploaded it. If you don't already have that game, when you go to the marketplace, you won't see an option for Steam Keys. You'll just see the option to download it from Springboard. Um, so, But if a content creator has not uploaded to our distribution system, you'll, you'll still see the Steam Keys option there. That's correct. Yeah, so just to sort of clarify that, um, we will be 
only showing our content distribution system if uh, the developer has gone through the process of uploading their content. So the, we will always be preferring that method over Steam Keys just because it's a better process for the developer, for you, for us, for everybody. Awesome. Okay, Anthony provided more clarity here. Will there be special licensing for educational institutions? Uh, separate tiers. So at the moment, no, the, the pricing will be the same. Uh, for if you're an educational institution or an arcade. Um, we've talked about later on, uh, depending on, on feedback and such, reducing the price. Um, we talked to some arcade or some content creators straight out the gate about something like that, and they didn't feel comfortable with it without a little bit more information. So um, at the moment, it'll just be the same price across arcades and educational institutions. Can we find our own local company? <clears throat> okay, I think this uh, question was answered already, Ken, but the, the, the short answer is you can use our, our advertising, advertising boards or announcement boards that you can fully control and customize. Um, and, but the, the ads that, the ad partner that we're working with, no, there's no way to work with our local, your local companies, at least not in this initial release. Um, any word if we are getting vacation simulator in the blue? Oh man. Um, there is def. Okay. I wish Will was here or someone from the content team. Cause I don't know what I can say and what I can't say. So I'm, I'm just going to uh, err on the side of caution on this one and not say anything. Um, but <laughs> you'll know the answer to that eventually. <laughs> um, Hi, any follow-up, Mixcast? Yes, Craig, great question. Um, so we are finalizing, we are going to be finalizing the Mixcast integration. Okay, actually I lied earlier when I said our desktop devs are gonna be going from CDS to SDK. They're actually gonna be going from CDS to finalize the Mixcast integration to SDK. So Mixcast integration should follow very shortly after this initial CDS release. Um, we got the pricing model by email. So Craig, there should be a free, there should be a, a, a licensing model that they have that there's no cost to you at all. Um, so if you could actually forward me that email, that would be really helpful. I just want to make sure that communication between us and Mixcast and Mixcast and you all has, is that we're on the same page because there definitely should be a model that, that costs you nothing. Um, so if you could Craig follow up with an email with me, I'd really appreciate that. It's Jordan at springboardvr.com. Thanks. Uh, can you briefly explain the edit launch settings tab? Uh, Jamie, do you want to take that one? Yeah. So there will be two different views that you see. Um, one, if you have the manual added game, uh, so you can still manually add your content. And basically that launch setting tab just shows, uh, will be how you define where the executable path is. So if you have some sort of manual custom content, you can point to the actual space on the hard disk that actually will run that content. But if it is using our content distribution system, uh, the only uh, option you'll see there is for command line arguments. So if the game or content does support command line arguments and you know what those are, you can kind of just put an arbitrary string that will launch the game with those arguments. So that's really great for things like eventual things like room scale and opening uh, up to certain parts of content. But it's actually up to the developer to implement those command line arguments for you to know what those are and then actually set them. So it just la allows a little bit more flexibility of how you're actually launching games. Are there examples of schools that are currently using Springboard VR and can that be shared with other VR arcades to communicate that they're pitching to? How accurate is content for the medical applications? Um, so Solomon, yeah, he's, uh, he's working with XR libraries and they're working with a few hundred, I think, libraries. Um, and they're currently piloting Springboard VR at, uh, I don't know, 20 or so of their libraries. Um, I... We are, we are also working with a number of universities. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think through this off the cuff on how we could communicate that. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
Philip, if you want to email me um, or just even our EDU email, edu at springboardvr.com, I can provide you some more information. Uh, you know, there's, I think there's a lot that you're probably wanting to know and understand and how accurate is the content for the medical applications. There's a number of things I could spend an hour probably talking about that and answering that question. So um, why don't you send us an email and we'd love to answer as much as we can for you on the topic of VR applications in education. It's again, it's edu at springboardvr.com. Um, will the Springboard SDK for content creators be compatible with the Unity game engine? And will we be able to get the arcade names for arcade leaderboards? Uh, yes, J uh, Jamie, do you, can you answer this question? Should we bring on Chris? Uh, yeah, so my understanding is that we're going to try to cast as wide of net as possible with the SDK, but my gut says that we're likely going to be doing Unity first, or pardon me, uh, Unity for sure, and then Unreal, maybe, uh, but Unity will be for sure uh, uh, be the situation that uh, SDK will run in, and then one, because we use Unity internally, um, but <clears throat> as well, for the arcade name and the arcade leaderboards, yeah, there's that's for sure going to be a feature that we... Uh, will integrate with our, once we start having leaderboard features, uh, hopefully it'll be much more than just the arcade name and some scores. Hopefully we'll have a bit more, but uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, once we start announcing the features for the SDK, uh, that will become more clear. Hey, as per the booking question, was hoping there was an easier way to see booking other than exporting maybe like a live view booking page. So Marie said, uh... Marie said, you mean something different than the monitor stations view? For example, see a full week instead of just one day. So um, we hopefully are addressing some of those issues or not issues, but your needs in, in our, um, our operator analytics once we do start working on that and releasing that. Um, if, if Sean, if, you, if you're already a Springboard customer, I'd love if you could pop in discourse and pose your question. And then um, let's see, I, I want to get your feedback here because we are starting to really work through some of the details of what is our operator analytics page going to look like. And I, and there's definitely some of this data is going to be in there, but want to make sure, okay, are we capturing everything that, that arcades could possibly want to look at? Um, so Sean, can you actually just pop your, your email into either a direct message with one of us, Madison, or myself, or Jamie, and we'll we'll talk to you. Um, yeah, the, the, I'll, I'll maybe add something into here. We had uh, one uh, customer who was really wanting to see an overview of their entire day and attempted to do so with uh, zooming out on the browser. So on Chrome or Firefox or Safari or Edge or whatever, you can hit uh, your modifier key and then plus or minus to zoom in and out the browser. Uh, and so just to give you a heads up, Chrome doesn't zoom out correctly. Uh, so if you want to get like a full view of your entire day with the zoom out feature, uh, I actually would reach for Firefox, which I don't know why, but Google has decided that their zoom out feature is not going to be sort of a fake zoom and Firefox does the real zoom. And I pushed out uh, a couple updates to the monitor to allow for people to use the monitor at any zoom level. Um, on any browser. So that should make the experience a bit better if you want to get a bit more of a bird's eye view of the entire day. And then to make a comment on things like weekly and monthly views, this is things that we, these are, these are sort of features that we uh, had planned in the roadmap really early on. Um, and actually some of the earlier versions of the monitor had these features, uh, but we weren't dedicating enough time to make them useful. Nobody was really using them. And to sort of talk on Jordan's point a little bit where we looked at these booking features, look at these analytics features, we're just kind of in a bit of a more of a discovery process to make sure that we can deliver the highest value to you guys in terms of visibility. So whether or not kind of the weekly monthly view comes into the analytics or into the monitor is kind of yet to be seen, but we're definitely going to be addressing those issues. Um. Will online multiplayer be negatively effective? Uh, affected? No, it's going to be amazing in a sense that the idea is that 
not only is it going to be easier for you to group in your customers into a multiplayer game, a co-op game, and make that process so fast and easy, but we also are going, it's, it's going to allow them, if you want to, we'll give you the option, hey, do I want my arcade customers to be able to play multiplayer games with other, other arcades in the Springboard network or just general Steam users? Um, so that you'll have those types of options. And if anything, it'll, it, it should make it so that your customers can get into multiplayer games way easier because the user base should be there. Um, that's the idea at least. When will most of the new educational content be available? So as soon as we release April 2nd, April 9th, whatever it is, um, it will be there. And well, when I say it will be there, I mean, content creators have ha now had a couple of weeks to begin uploading their content. And so, you know, every day we're getting more content uploaded to our servers. And so a part of it just depends on when the content creators just sits down for an hour and does it. Uh, but we expect to have a good number available immediately. Um, so if you have to train staff on a game and they launch directly from Springboard, will they will there be a button to specify that we are running a staff training? So yeah, I the answer is no, but we we've considered this, we've talked about this, and I think there will be something like this some version of this in the future. Um, but if, for instance, you know, I don't know, the, the whole floating license structure should give you a lot of flexibility here in that you could just buy a, a game on a flat monthly license basis, play it as much as you want with your staff. And obviously it's, you're never going to get charged pay per minute for that. Um, but we are talking about in the future, what would it look like to offer a grace period for that training? So um, not in this initial release, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely something you guys are thinking about and we are too. We're trying to find a, the best solution there. Okay, um, last question. And then I probably will wrap in two minutes. So if you do have any more pressing questions, um, please go ahead and get those in now before we close. So when the CDS drops, will there still be issues with the limited number of keys or will games be more available oh no okay so with cds there's no more keys it's just you download it from springboard and there's a million copies available or there's a billion copies available um so no more inputting keys you just click a button it starts downloading to all your stations and you'll never have an issue of there wasn't a key available for you uh for developers is there a list of your arcades we can contact we are hosting arcade tournaments uh joseph i'm sure you're in contact with our content team they uh i don't know the best answer for that um but will at springboardvr.com i think we have content at springboardvr.com i'm sure you're talking to someone from our team over there I, uh, they'd love to to help you out with that will there be a way to identify content in the library which is multiplayer capable yes yeah, so all here jamie why don't you take yeah, uh, basically developers can tag whether or not it's single player or multiplayer. And then you as the operator yourself can uh, just tag it as single player or multiplayer as well. So yeah, it'll show whether or not it has capabilities right in the launcher. And if you don't know, there's little icons on the uh, card itself in the launcher, but as well, when you click into the game, it, show it shows you in text, either it's single player or multiplayer or both. I'm going to try to run through. All right, I'm just going to hit these last three questions um, and then wrap us up. Is there any plans for creating tournament management solutions, Springboard or third party using SDK options? So, um, no, I mean, I don't know. I can't. This is a hard question to answer. We've thought about something like this. We want there to be better integration with tournament options. We think that the company that we're partnered with right now uh, is doing a really great job. Um, so we don't know. There might be Andy. We'd love to. I mean, we, we want the whole multiplayer social elements of the arcades. We want those features to, to, to be available to you all and uh, to have a better experience. So we'll see. Uh, definitely something that we're thinking about. On the booking page that we use, will you update the way it's booked? And as if you have multiple people in the same things. Um, uh, Jamie or... 
Yeah, I kind I, I I don't know exactly what this is um what exact like pain point they're trying to address here. Uh whether or not it's actually the booking widget or whether or not it's on the monitor. Uh but we have also been thinking a lot about how we because we know that a lot of um arcades their business comes through parties. Um and so multiple people. Pardon me, I have a little frog in my throat. Um but uh yeah, so there is going to be more updates in the pipeline for dealing with parties and making sure that uh, that multiple people coming in at once and booking multiple stations is better. But that support right now does exist inside of Springboard. So uh, one party can block, off, like one reservation can block off multiple stations. So just make sure that uh, you know that when you are making a booking in the monitor, if you go to edit booking uh, or go to the full booking edit, you can select multiple stations to block off, and then a single reservation can have multiple stations. I think you're talking with Madison as well, or she's reached out at least to talk to you about Checkfront and those sorts of things. So definitely be sure to have that conversation with her as well. Okay, two more questions, then we're going to wrap up. Will the new pricing model introduce any titles that have lifetime licenses? No, at least not right now. Um, Developers hate it, the idea of lifetime licenses. Some of you are like, oh, well, I got lifetime licenses when I opened my arcade. Well, that's because content creators didn't know better and um, a lot of them actually feel, have a pretty sour taste in their mouth uh, that, that that happened. It's okay, we're all learning and growing, but at this point, no, lifetime licenses is something that anytime we talk to content creators about, they, they don't get too happy with us, so. At the moment, no. Is there a better way to block off stations for a party reservation, or still to do it one by one? Uh, so, Elijah, let's talk to let's talk with you offline uh, with Madison about our booking situation. Like I said, it's high, high, high priority that we figure this out. Madison at springboardvr.com. She wants to fully understand your pain points and your issues. So, get with her, guys. Thanks so much. This is an awesome open huddle. We're super excited to release this to you. Um, if you do have any questions afterwards that you, you thought of like, oh shoot, I should ask that. Of course, please feel free to reach out to us. Support at springboardvr.com. Um, this is a major update. Uh, there's kind of a lot of foundational changes that are involved. And so we want to make sure you feel comfortable with all the changes. We want to make sure you understand all the changes and, um, yeah, any questions welcomed, uh, please. If you don't ask, we don't know what we're not communicating correctly. So um, go ahead and feel free to email us at any time, guys. We really appreciate all of you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. We'll probably be having another open huddle, you know, I don't know, in probably a month or so to 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 talk about the, one, the Operator CDS 1.5 launch. So stay tuned for that. And... You all have a good rest of your day, okay? Thanks.